For this tutorial, you will need your selected yarn. I am using Milamia Naturally Soft Aran. Um, I am using Cloud Grey and this is Ivory. So for this particular project, you can use any yarn that you prefer. I would go for a DK weight or an Aran weight. Um, so yeah, you can choose your yarn brand, just you want to make sure that you have a cream or a white and then a light grey. I'm using a five and a half millimeter crochet hook with this yarn. You will also need a pair of scissors and darning needle for sewing in your ends. And this is optional, but you might want to have some bobbins of some sort. I like to use these grips um, to keep my yarn on because we will be winding off some of the colors so that we can work throughout the project, which if you're not familiar with C2C, um, and graph gans then I'll explain this a little bit later in the video. So I'll be leaving all the links in the description box below for you including the link to the blog post for this pattern uh, where you'll find everything that you need so make sure that you go and check that out and as always if you like my videos don't forget to leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell button as well because you'll be notified of when my videos go live. Okay, so before we get started, there are a few things I want to go through with you when it comes to a graph GAN, the charts that you can see and how you're going to work through these and how to use them. Also some considerations when it comes to what colours you're going to need and that's where the bobbins will come in as well. Forgive me for having this on my iPad. <laughs> I was having trouble with my printer so this is the only way I can do it but um, I'll try not to get this light reflection in too much for you. Okay, so if you are familiar with how to read graph guns, um, you I'll leave some timestamps in the description box so you can move forward to whichever section you need to, or alternatively, you can click that um, link in the description box, which will take you to the blog post, where I'll have all of the information, including the downloadable PDF pattern for this as well. But for today's video, we're going to do a sample section just so that you can um, get the techniques of what to do for a graph GAN and then you can apply this to future projects as well. Okay, so first of all, we have the chart here. This is for my bunny wall hanging. And the most obvious thing that you'll see is these numbers down the side. Now, if you're doing a um, normal sort of crochet stitches you're usually working along uh, the bottom and then moving up a row but you'll notice that these are going diagonally and that is what we want to be looking at first of all when it comes to a graph gan. So I do have a video of the corner to corner stitch on my channel already which is a little bit more of a slowed down version if you want to go and check that out I'll leave a link in the description box below I will show you again anyway but if you want a more detailed version then it is there so with a graph GAN you're going to be starting in this box here and doing your um, first set of stitches and then you'll be moving up to the next set of stitches and doing this one and this one and so on and so forth. So you'll work up in a di diagonal um, direction. So for example, we'll be working this way first and then we'll be working back up this way and then back down this way and so on and so forth. So that is the way um, a corner to corner blanket works. We then have some other considerations that we need to um, make before we actually start our project and that is the colour situation. So this is only a two colour graph GAN, so a really perfect place to start if you are new to graph GANs um, and changing colour within a C2C project. Um, so we have to be mindful of us working in this diagonal direction. You can see that we're going to be doing quite a few um, rows, like diagonal rows, before we actually come to changing colour. So our first colour change um, will be on row nine. So when we're working up row nine this way, for example, we get a colour change just here. So we can just pick up a colour, which is absolutely fine at this point, 
because we'll be using that again. And then we'll be going back to the white. Now it's th at this point you need to decide, am I going to have to carry the yarn too much in order to carry on this yarn? And when you consider the next rows that you need to do, so for the next row you're actually going to have four lots of, or four squares of the gray before you ch change back to the white. Okay, so I've just labeled up my chart here of roughly where we're going to need to change some bobbins. So for the white, for example, we're going to need to have one bobbin for all of this section, another bobbin for around here. We'll need some smaller bobbins worth for these three sections, and then we'll need another slightly larger bobbin for around here. So we just need to be mindful of that. For the grey section, we'll probably be able to get away with using one bobbin for this section and then we'll need another bobbin for this section of the ear. Uh, just because they're broken up by um, the colours. So we're looking likely to need six bobbins, three larger ones, three smaller ones for the white and then two bobbins for the, the grey. So once you get the hang of um, graph gans and once you practice with more, you'll get a feel for what you're going to need. But that's just the general basics of what, what you're going to need to think of prior to starting a project, project like this. Obviously there's more to think about when it comes to more um, more colours on your project. That's why I say a two colour project is a perfect one to start with. Okay, so that is your bobbins um, and your colour changes. Now let's get started with the actual stitch. So for this demonstration, I'm going to do a um, 10 by 10 square section. This way you'll be able to see the pattern, you'll be able to see how to change colours using the bobbins and also increasing and decreasing our stitches as well. And then you can use those skills to apply it to the whole project. So go ahead and get your bobbins ready. Um, I will show you next just how to wind off a bobbin if you're unsure, uh, but get all your materials ready and I shall see you in a moment. Okay, so when it comes to creating your bobbins, you can, if you know that you're not doing a huge amount, you can simply just wind off your yarn nice and gently. Don't wind it too tight um, and just take off some yarn like so. Um, this will be perfect for one of those smaller sections because we really don't need a huge amount at all. So I'm going to do one of these and then a few others as well. And then when it comes to doing larger sections, you can use a bobbin, which is essentially a piece of cardboard um, and wrap it round, or you could use something like this. I just think these just look super cool. So <laughs> I like to use these um, and then just wrap the yarn around like so. Again, just being nice and gentle with um, how tight you're wrapping it round. And this for me is going to be a slightly larger section. It's not the end of the world if you don't wind off enough, especially if you have another ball of yarn, obviously that's going to make things a lot easier for you. It just makes things a little bit tricky um, if you end up having to wind off some more yarn by taking it from the center of the ball or something like that. It just gets a little bit more messy. So, um, if you, if you do too much, again, that's not a problem. It's probably better to do too much than not enough at all. Um, so yeah, go ahead and get your bobbins ready for each of the colors and then meet me back in a moment. Okay, so I have my sections all ready. I have, I'm going to use the main ball for the first sections, uh, but they are all ready and prepared. 
And now we're going to start by doing the actual pattern. We're going to start using the lighter color, so the cream or the white, whichever you're using. I'm going to go ahead and put a pink background on this just so it's easier for you to see. So as I mentioned before, we're going to do the, just a sample piece here I'm going to demonstrate. Um, we're going to start off in this first block just here and then move up to doing the bl two blocks here and here and then three, etc. cetera. Um, so I'm going to show you how we're going to do the actual C2C stitch first. As I say, if you want a little bit more of an in-depth explanation of this, you can go ahead and check out my um, video, which I did a few years ago. But we're going to start off with a slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook. And then we're going to start by chaining six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're then going to be working back into this chain. We're going to miss three chains. So not the one that's on the hook, one, two, and three. And in the fourth chain along, we're going to do a treble crochet. So this is a UK term. In the US, this is known as a double crochet. So it's yarn over, insert into that fourth chain, yarn over, pull through. You'll have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two. You'll have two loops on the hook, and then yarn over, pull through two loops. So that's one. And then into the next stitch, do another treble crochet, two, and three. And there we have created our very first block, like so. So that is block number one. We then need to create two blocks for the next row, diagonal row. So what we do here, and this is the same for the beginning of any other diagonal row, we're going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and turn our work. We're now going to do those three trebles into the chain starting in the fourth chain from the hook. So not the one that's on the hook, we have one, two, and three. So go ahead, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So that's one, two, and three. So this is where, if you're not used to corner to corner, it can get a little bit confusing uh, because we just look like we have two floppy blocks here and you can't really tell what's what yet. But if you just think about where this um, knot is here from our starting chain, that is the very corner. And what we want to do is have a look at this block that we've already made. So this is block number one from row one. And we can see that we have a chain space here, just as we have on this one as well. It's almost like we have four trebles, but the first one is a chain. What we want to do here is we want to connect this block to this first one um, to bring it together. And the way that we do that is insert into that chain space and do a slip stitch like so. And there we have block one and the first of our second row. So we need to make another block here. What we're going to do is chain up three, one, two, three. That creates the same chain space as we have on each of the other rows. And then we're going to do three trebles in that chain space as well. One, two, and three. So let me just show you what we have done so far. So if we lay it down like this, and then if we have a look, we have done this block, this block, and this block. We're about to chain up along here now. We'll chain up six, and we'll work those three trebles here and start to work on this direction now. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So as always, we're going to chain up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you're a little bit confused of why we chain up six here, it's because we're creating the chain space, these, these three chains here, and then these are the stitches that we're going to work into. So we're going to turn our work, skip those three chains, because that creates the chain space, and then work three trebles. One, two, and three. We now need to connect this down to this next square. So we'll slip stitch into that chain space, chain up three, one, two, three, and then work three trebles. One, two, and three. We'll find that next square, slip stitch into it, chain up three, one, two, three, and then work three trebles. One, two, and three. And there we have created our three diagonal rows, which looking at this chart, we have one, two, and three, just like so. So you're going to work your way back and forth for all of these rows. We won't be changing color until row nine. So you want to build those eight diagonal rows in the same way. If you are really struggling with where you are up to in terms of your corners. Remember this tail here is the very bottom corner. And then you can always mark this first square with a stitch marker and your last square with a stitch marker if it's really something that you are getting confused by. And it just gives you a marker of where to work up to. So go ahead and work those eight rows and I'll come back and I'll show you how you're going to start changing color. Okay, so I've now done my eight diagonal rows and we're now at row nine. So we're going to start here. Now you can see that we have two blocks of white before we change color and then we'll do two blocks of gray and then change color again to finish off this row. So that's what I'm going to show you now is how to change those colors. So we'll go ahead and um, do the first two blocks. So I'm just going to chain my six and do those two blocks and then meet you back when I'm ready to change. Okay, so I'm now at the section where I am ready to change uh, to the gray color. And what I'm going to do here is actually change on the slip stitch. So you want to insert your crochet hook, go ahead and grab your new color, loop it over and slip stitch through. So this ball of yarn that I have here is now going to sit and wait until I get back to pick up this yarn again because I have a second ball of yarn um, ready for when we uh, get to the other side of these two blocks. So I'm going to chain up three as we would do normally, lay down the tail end, and then as I'm working into that chain three section, I'm going to work in that tail end just to save me from sewing in my um, yarn too much. I'm also going to bring that up to the next section where I'm going to do my slip stitch, just pull it nice and gently, 
chain three and then just further disguise that tail end into the work. So we have one, two and three. So if I just um, lay this down so that we can see what the work is looking like, I'll just bring this tail end to the back. So these are our two blocks. So for row nine, we have white, white, gray, gray. And then we're going to turn back to the white. But I'm going to attach another bobbin of this color so that we can start to work up here and carry that yarn up this way and then carry the original yarn round that way. Um, so you'll see what I mean when I do that now. So if we get back to our work, we'll do that color change in the same way. So we go into the next square, we take a new bit of yarn, bobbin of yarn and pull through. chain three, one, two, three. We're going to leave this gray for now and come back to that because uh, we're going to pick that up when we come back to the next row. And then we're going to just continue to finish off row nine, your diagonal row nine, which is all the way to the end. So again, if you just want to carry up that tail end, you could go ahead and do that and it just saves you having to sew in too many ends once you have finished. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off row nine and then I'm going to come back and show you row 10 we have one, two, three, four, five blocks before we change color. So I'm going to start row 10 and do those five blocks and then show you how to change colors again. And then we'll get into um, decreasing our work and how we do that. Okay, so we now have the four gray blocks that we need to do. And we now have the gray, which is over here. So just as we would do normally with a color change, we were, we're going to yarn over and pull this through, but what we need to do is just grab it and pull it back over from this block and then pull it through like so. And then because this is a second bobbin of yarn that we have, we just keep that to one side so that we can pick that back up once we reach this side of the work. You just want to be mindful that you're not pulling too tight on this um, second color so that it doesn't distort the work but you can go ahead and then just work over that stretched piece of yarn, which we've taken from the here to here, so that we are working that in and you can't see it being pulled over from one square to the other. So I'm going to go ahead here and do my four squares. And then again, I'll come back and show you how we're going to carry this piece and pick this piece back up again. So do your four squares and then meet me back in a moment. Okay, so I'm just about to do my fourth square and I need to carry this yarn up so that we can use it again for the last square. So I'm just going to lay it up like so and then do my slip stitch as normal as I have been doing and then that just brings that yarn up. Lay that down and then finish off my block, so three trebles, two and three. And now we're ready to change colors again. So for my sample piece, which I'm doing here, my demonstration piece, I am just doing the, that block of 10 by 10. So I'll lay it up again, drop the gray, and then pull through. You just might have to adjust the yarn a little bit just to make it sit right. And then we're going to finish off that final block. 
that's two and three. So here is what my work is looking like. And then this is my chart. So I've just come down this way and worked my block, uh, my row of 10. And now you can see that instead of um, working up the six, like we would do if we were continuing with this whole piece, we actually need to now work back up this way. So I'm going to show you now how you would decrease. And we're also going to need to consider the um, change of color here as well. Okay, so at the end of this row, we're going to turn our work and we're, whereas before we did a chain six, um, we're going to do that first three chains essentially just as a slip stitch. So we're going to go in between this stitch and slip stitch, in between the next stitch and slip stitch and then in between the last stitches and slip stitch. So that is essentially classing as the first of the, the first three chains of the chain six. Um, we do actually need to change color here though. So I'm going to pick up the gray yarn and then just pull that through. And then I'm going to chain three. One, two, and three. And then there we have our color change. So essentially, instead of doing a chain six, we do three slip stitches and a chain three. Um, and that just keeps this section nice and flat. And then we continue with our normal pattern. So creating a block, slip stitch into the next block, chain three, get the height and then doing your three trebles again. So for this sample piece, I need to do one, two, one, two, three, four, five blocks of gray. And then one, two, three, four blocks of um, the cream. So I'll do one, two, three, four, five blocks of the gray and then one, two, three, four blocks of the cream because we're going to keep this section flat. So I'm going to build those five blocks of gray and those four blocks of cream and then show you how we move on to the next row, which is essentially row 12 because we're just doing row 11 at the moment. Okay, so I just want to show you where I'm up to. This is the sample piece here. And then this is where we've just worked up to. So this is the last block that I am on now. And this is obviously where we have to uh, make that flat section so that we can move on to, what is it? 11, 12, row 13. So as we're looking at it like this, we're actually working the opposite way. So you just have to be mindful of that. We're going to go into that section with a slip stitch to join this last block to the first block. We're going to turn our work. And if you remember what I said uh, before, instead of doing a chain six here, we're going to do slip stitch, slip stitch, and slip stitch, and then a chain three. So instead of th uh, six chains, it's three sti slip stitches and then three chains and then continue down making our blocks. So I'm going to work this row. I need to do one, two, three, four white blocks, one, two, three, four um, gray blocks and then decrease again. So I'll show you one more time how to decrease and then work up th this way. So th these small color changes here and here, they're pretty much the same, but I will come back and show you how to do those. But I'll show you one more time how we're going to decrease. 
Okay, so I am now at the end of this row. I've just done my four grey blocks. I'm going to slip stitch into that next block so that I can um, anchor that down. And then I'm going to turn my work. So we're going to decrease again. And then this time we need to do four blocks. So we've just worked down here and we need to work back up this way. So we're going to do four blocks of the gray and then three blocks of the white. So if we go ahead and decrease, which is slip stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch, and then chain three, one, two, three, and continue with our block. So this row is again quite straightforward. The next row, we're gonna have some color changes back and forth within the row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete this row, move on to the next row. So I'm going to complete this row. I'm going to also complete the next row, which is two white, three gray, one white. And then we have a color change within the actual row. So I'll just show you um, how to do that. And then hopefully you should get the hang of um, doing your rows. So pause the video, work your way to the end of this row. You'll then do two white, four gray, one white, and then I'll meet you back for the row after. Okay, so this is where I'm up to now with my work. So you can see here that this is the, the part of the nose. Obviously that would be built bigger if I was doing the larger version now. Uh, but what we're going to do now is do a gray, a white, a gray, and then two whites. So there's just a few more color changes in this section. Now I'm going to do this as if um, I am or if I was doing the whole thing, because at this point I would just use a separate color bobbin there, so another of the smaller bobbins. Um, I've gone ahead and done my first gray block. So at this point, I would take one of my really small bobbins, which I made, or my sections that I tied off, and it's really just the same as any other color change, um, but obviously we're just changing color quicker between the two. So I would chain three, and then my three trebles, one, two, and three. Carry up my gray yarn. and then change color on that slip stitch. Now for me now with this one, I'm done with that. So it's totally up to you if you want to fully secure that in because it's going to be a lot looser than if we picked it back up again and worked it into the work. So if you wanted to sew that in at this point, you can absolutely do that. Uh, but I'm just going to continue with my two blocks of grey, sorry, one block of grey, one, two, and three, oops, three, and then changing colour to the cream, one, two, three, and then finishing off with my two blocks. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to slip stitch, turn the work, and then three stitch slip stitches across. And then for the next block, we'll, we'll actually change color. So let me get this into the right position so that you can see. Okay, so you can see the pattern here. We've just finished this section here and then we have one, two, three, four more rows decreasing of just the grey to finish off. So I'll leave this here so that you can see if you want to pause the video, but we'll go back down this way, back up, back down and back up. So I'll meet you back on this final one and I'll show you how to finish off as if you were finishing off your entire piece of work. Okay, so I have just come to the end here. I have deliberately covered a section here because I somehow have an extra block, but we'll just ignore that, that is not there. Um, I've actually been filming this um, on and off, so I think I just must have uh, gone a little bit crazy somewhere there. But this is what the sample piece is looking like. And then this is the sample piece here. So I am, have not uh, cut off any of my ends because I'm actually going to take this back to where it went wrong and finish this off as a whole piece. But you would simply yarn over, chain one, snip off your yarn, and then sew in all your ends. And that would be your finish graph gan. So I know these can seem quite intimidating, but if you just take your time, if you print off your chart or if you use an iPad like me, you can take track of where you're up to, making sure that you don't add extra ones along the way like me. Um, but here we go, here is the finished make. Um, if you want to make the whole um, bunny wall hanging, again, I'll leave a link in the description box below so that you can go and check that out. I'll also leave lots of information as a written pattern and written instructions on the blog post as well. So make sure that you go and check that out. There will be an available PDF to purchase where I'll leave additional designs in as well in terms of turning this into a, a cushion, a blanket, etc. Et so that is available as well. But I hope that you have found this tutorial helpful, even if you did, just this sample piece here. I hope that the techniques that you've learned have been beneficial and will really give you the confidence to move forward and either create your own designs or try out some more patterns, maybe even some with additional colors as well. But thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest videos and click that bell button so that you get notified. And I shall see you again next time. Bye.